This free acrylic tutorial is being brought to you by the Ginger Cook Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting and contributions from caring viewers like you. Now, on with the show. And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the mother of artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning master acrylic artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Guys, hey, if you're watching this, um, Ginger, congratulations, John, you found congrats, us. You found us, congratulations. This is a, hopefully you, you caught this as the premiere where John and I are, even though we're traveling, we're able to answer questions and chat live with you. And we'll, we'll go with this video uh, with you. This is a fabulous uh, tutorial, a palette knife. This is palette knife, um, the month of uh, May is a palette knife month for uh, that we decided for YouTube. We start gonna do palette knife pictures. And we're going to talk, we show different ways of taking out paintings that, you know, maybe we've already painted, someone's painted, and we're going to show you how to do them in palette knife. And I think I'm very excited about this. And um, every few minutes, you know, every once in a while, I'm going to throw in a tip or two. I catch the very beginning of this because I've got an important tip for you bef that you don't want to miss. And um, let's get right down to uh, suggesting you subscribe to the channel now before you forget. And then Ask John to come on down to our painting, and I'll show you what we're going to be painting. I'm there. All right, so some time ago, over a year ago, this was one of my favorite tutorials on YouTube, was the Kanapali Coast, which are Hawaiian uh, cliffs, and um, th these cliffs go way, way up, and you've got this beautiful turquoise water. And you'll notice that um, we're going to do this painting in palette knife, which I think will even be more wonderful than it was regularly. And, of course, you know, we... I think this is uh, something, it's fun to practice. We're going to try a little bit of modeling paste to get it some texture. And you notice I've got a nice little frame on it. Now, I haven't, this particular one, did this a couple times, it's not signed. And I want to just show you something. Um, I'm going to do this. Do you see that? Now, do you see right here, this is the edge where the frame comes. If you do not allow at least a finger for your signature, Top and it bottom. May, it top and bottom, you will not see the signature. So I, I just want you to see that. Right? That's really important. So if I were to sign it right here, okay, now you'll see it, okay? But if I had signed it down here, it would have disappeared. You see the difference? See how it's in this neat little frame now? So it's a typical, it's a wonderful beachy frame, isn't it? And then now the signature is in the correct place. Okay. There's your first tip That's of the night. That's your first tip of the night. Just right if you, there. you just saw that and said, genius, Ginger, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm going to subscribe. I can't wait to, to not only subscribe, but I want to contribute to your care little uh, scholarship fund on your webpage because that was just information too good to be true. It was, <laughs> wasn't it? All right. So now here's this little 8 by 10 canvas. And I've got one just painted sort of a turquoise blue color, but some sort of light blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to just um, draw this in. All right, so this is about halfway. And I think I had a chalk here. I want to come in and just come down here like this, leave about four, three, three to four fingers here. Kind of slope it up like that, yeah? And then I want to come straight out like this from here. Come straight out and start zigzagging this way because about three fingers, well, four over here from the cliff, I want a cliff coming down like this to the water, okay? And then I want to do another like three fingers. And okay, we'll do another straight line here and do another one. And then back here, we want a little bit of sky. This has got to be level right here. This will be our last. Make sure this is straight across and level. And this will come out a little bit, right? So here's our cliff here. And now we know we've got one coming right here and right about here. So we've got our cliffs. We've got one, two, three, four, five, yeah? Six counting that. See how I kind of, kind of sketched that in? Yeah. So now, now that's pretty much, and then 
I know that I want all my palette knife strokes going this way, uh, not up and down or anything. And so that's very important, right? That you think about brush and palette knife direction. All right, so now that we know that, let's put out, uh, we're just going to, um, we're going to put out some modeling paste and a dark color. All right. Let's see, I think we had this open and now it's not open anymore, John. <laughs> you closed it too tight again. Well, no, it needs to be soaked. The top needs to be soaked. Okay. All right, so um, this is just some golden modeling paste. Just and right um, we don't need a lot of it. We're just going to, you know, I don't want to do it too thick because we're going to have to skin it over. Okay, modeling paste will dry a little faster than gels, which is why we're using it. Uh, gels, gels, you know, a little bit longer to dry. That's fine. Just, just, yeah, that's good. So, um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just. Okay. Uh, can, let's, can you move your original painting back out? Because we don't need that. Yeah, you don't. I can just no, put it up I here for you. because I got the me. image in there. Yeah. All right. So we got our modeling paste out. We know we're gonna want that. I'm just figuring we'll do that, right? There we go. Now the question is, do we do our background first? Maybe we'll do our back sky first, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to take some titanium white and some ultramarine blue, okay? And um, is that a piece of chalk on the palette? Yeah, it is, and that's some uh, thalo blue, okay? And not very much, and I think probably a little bit of burnt umber. Burnt sienna, rather. This is burnt sienna. Let's open this up here. It's not coming out very well. All right. Here. There. All right. So what I want back up in here is the sky. And the first thing I'm going to do is get some white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of thalo blue, tiny, like 1% of that burnt sienna. And I'm going to make this sky color. And I want a little bit more turquoisey. So there we go like that, and, and the, the reddish brown color kind of grayed it. And I can put, if I want, I can add just a touch of modeling paste and mix in that, right? And I'm going to come up here like this and c come right up against the sky like that and um, just add this uh, sky in here. It's kind of a gray sky. It's just right over this blue-green color. Okay, and I'm just going to keep the uh, 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 the, the thickness kind of going this way. All right, and then so it's sort of an impasto technique. And then take a little bit of white here, and right while it's still wet, barely touch it, I'm just going to add a little bit of light around this back hill like this and down toward the water's edge. Okay? There we go. There we go. So that's my sky. That's all there is to it. Now for my cliff, I need a darker cliff, so I've got a couple of ways I can get that to happen. Um, one thing I can do, and it might be kind of fun, is I'm going to use a color called Payne's Gray. We don't use this too often, but we're going to do it today. And if I gray, don't have Payne's Gray? Uh, you can use black and ultramarine blue. There okay? we go. And we're going to take some Payne's Gray and ultramarine blue and a little bit of brown, this brown color. Don't make it, you don't want any white in this, right? And a little tiny bit of this modeling paste, not very much, about a tea, you know, about a teaspoon. Okay, and I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to just suggest that this is. I'm not doing this back hill. I'm going to leave the one that's closest to my um, uh, one that's the absolute closest to my. Um, sky I'm not because I haven't dried it so uh, that would be you know kind of crazy so I'm going to just kind of shape this like this say here's my kind of point and if I turn this upside down um, I can get a little bit of a straighter edge right here okay just kind of spread that all right so that's there's a little bit of texture here like this and just kind of keep everything going down like that okay and then I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue to this and just move over here like that. And uh, a little bit more blue. And here's this one. It's a little bit darker, right? I'm going to come out here and say, here's my next hill. 
in acrylics, we always do the darkest colors first, yeah? So we're going to say that there's our dark cliff coming here, down here like this, and bringing it down to our, uh, our sand's going to go. And then I'll just take some modeling paste here like this. And it's a bit lighter, but that's okay. I know this isn't going to be this color. It's going to be some other color here, so I, I'm all right with that if it's a little bit lighter. You'll see that that's coming up there like that, okay? Now, the same thing with this one here. I'll get a little more modeling paste, a little bit more into here. So it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to say, here's my next one. Let's put a little bit of white with that and brown with that. Just make it a little bit lighter, not too light. I'm going to say, here's my next one. My next tail coming this way. Okay. It's going to come down like this. I'll grab some of this darker color. Say so here's this coming this way. You really get a nice streaky effect with that. Yeah, we, we really are getting a nice streaky effect, right? And then... Now one of the secrets is not really blending or pushing down hard, getting... Yeah, you don't want to... Not mixing you, the colors. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So we're going to just say here's another lighter bit up here. And as I get further this way, I'll have it darker. Here's my paints gray coming down here like this. So my underpaintings, I could have just done modeling paste, but this is sort of my underpainting of this, these cliffs like that. Okay, so it doesn't look like too much, you know, now, but there it is, yeah. And then as long as I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and say, here's this, here's the modeling paste and the paints gray, a little bit of this brown. And I'm going to say, here's the, Here's my cliff coming up this way. Now, the thing is with palette knives is you really have to, this is the way I do it, other people may do it differently, but I feel like you need to just skin over this modeling paste um, and really dry it so that you can then keep going with your colors. And the idea that you're doing a palette knife and you don't need a brush is ridiculous. Of course you can use a brush. Now let's see if I can do a lighter blue back in here. I want a darker kind of blue-gray hill. And I'm just going to come down here like this. It's this way. There we go. Let's just, just kind of paint that in there like that. That's my furthest back one. Okay. All right. So then what could I do anything differently? So. I'm looking to see is there any kind of kill shape that I want a little differently why I've got the modeling paste out. And um, I think I want this to curve a little more up here. So I'm going to have this curve a bit more and then do that, kind of a little bit more of a curve. So I can play with this a little bit. So that's what I've got. And that's I, it's interesting that th at this point, you know, what you're going to do is you're going to just and we'll even put some of this darker color in it like this. We're going to just dry this. All right? Everybody's good with that? We are going to be great with that. All right. John's got some wonderful things he's going to share with you Why I draw this. You know, when John and I first started out teaching acrylic painting, our goal was to take people who had never painted before and step by step bring them up to the level of a master artist. And when we first started the Academy, we started out with a you know, $300 camera and a, and a $50 microphone and a $500 computer. And over the years, we've gotten four or five cameras shooting our videos. We've gotten uh, you know, terrific sound systems. We've gone to elaborate larger paintings, much more in-depth videos. And as you guys got better, we got better. So if you want to really, really tune in and hone your artwork to the highest level, Come see us at the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting and start at the beginning and watch your mediocre rise. Meteor is that the right word? What is that? Mediocre, what? Fast rise? What are we saying? Fast track. Fast track. Get on the fast track. That's it. To be a really successful acrylic painter. Thanks. It may or may not be enough time for that dry. Now, this is not completely dry, but it is skinned over, all right? 
So that's the important thing. It's skinned over. Meaning that you, if you, you dug down, it would still be wet, but it's but it's it's, it's enough not to mix do it. with another layer. No. So we're going to just take a minute now and, and you know maybe um, you know I'm probably at this point I'm answering some questions from our audience from our live audience uh, that's you know doing the premiere. So if you're watching this later, this would be a good time to you know read what some of those questions are being asked. Okay. So we got some yellow oxide. We've got um, we've got white. We want to do zinc white, and I've got an old thing of zinc white I want to use up. So here's this old jar of zinc white I found in the studio. I want to just use that up. Um, it's pretty thick. This is about the end of it. This is a nice little jar. I ought to just soak this jar and keep it. You know that? When I say we, I meant, probably meant John. <laughs> Here, let's mound it up. You guys know about mounding up your paint, yeah? Once you spread it thin, it's going to dry faster. Yeah, so if you mound it up, you're in pretty good shape. It's a good palette. Look how that scraped that. That's really it's a good way to scrape the palette clean. Okay, so there's this. I think there might be a little more in that jar, but not much. All right, so we've got zinc white. We've got yellow oxide. We have uh, burnt sienna. We've got um, we've got our blues. We've got some yellow. And we should have cad yellow medium, and probably cad red medium. And I think we're probably good to go. Um, I'm going to use uh, Southern Ocean blue by Matisse. Otherwise, you can use Thalo blue and Thalo green and a little bit of white to get that effect. It's sort of a mixture. And let's see what else am I missing here. Uh, um, you going for the water now? Uh, no, but I think um, I think I am going to open some water. I'm really I'm just see I, we've got such nice texture on here, okay? So now I think the thinking is that if you have a palette knife, then you just never use a brush, which of course is silly. Of course you can use a brush. So one of the best ways to you know to kind of create um, atmospheric perspective is uh, using zinc white. And um, you know, if we need to, you know, add a few more clouds back up in here, we can do that. You know, just kind of come over this back hill like that and suggest that um, that you barely see this one. I'm just taking a little bit of zinc white like that and, and kind of creating that effect. And um, you know, and that's just very lightly with the brush, right? If you didn't think you had the complete, um, if you didn't get all the the color in there. You can take a little brush and tap something up. It's okay. It's not cheating, okay? Just, you know, be happy with, you know, figure out what you want to do and, and do that. Now, uh, and the same thing here, if you need to take a brush and kind of, you know, uh, define a, a top of a hill and you didn't quite get it, that's what your brush is for. And the other thing I would take is a brush. I want to make sure that this line here is very straight. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue and white, that's titanium white, yeah, and a uh, tiny bit of that burnt sienna to tone it down, gray it out. I want to come back here and suggest that this is my, I want to make sure this is very level right here, okay, and it's going to come around this peak here. I'm going to bring that peak down. But I can put that in with the brush, and that's where you want to decide what, you know, where you, um, let's take a little bit of that phthalo Southern Ocean Blue, too. Let's pull some of that color in here. Now, we can go back with some texture on that, but we can lay in our uh, picture. And I can the same thing here with a little bit of white and, and, and yellow. If I wanted some, you know, here's some yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna. I want a kind of a, I want a little bit of a mossy gr green color. Take some yellow oxide, a little bit of phthalo blue. There you go. There's a little bit of mossy green color. Now I want some of that color on my um, my next um, uh, my next hill here. So I'm going to just take. I've already got. See, I've already got texture on here, so I don't need to do much of that. I just very gently need to barely touch it. And if I skim it over the top of this, what happens is the brown catches. And you are automatically get a really good, nice rock area without um, having to put in all the crevices. See what that did? See how? And you want this to be a very, very, um, 
a deep um, olive green. This has got to be an olive green color here. You can't have this bright. You, you, okay, and, and, okay, so I'm not getting any more. Barely touching this now. I'm just suggesting that there's this sort of green that's coming down here, this tropical green growing down over the rocks of this back here. All right, now, um, I'm thinking, where else do I want this green color? I know that I want this green color up here, and I'm going to curve it around like this. Uh, take this palette, and I see I just have it on one edge here. I'm going to curve it this way. And... Uh, Suggest that it's growing kind of down the cliff like that. And I want you to see how fast it disappeared. Did you see how fast this paint just went away? Um, so the modeling paints really help stretch that, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So that, yeah, it does. I'm going to put a little bit more. You don't want to over mix your paint. So I'm going to say this is my lightest part right here. A little bit of yellow oxide right here like that. Okay. So there's my yellow top of that lighter. I want to bring this down like this. Suggest that this is kind of green right there. And uh, even have a little bit of this green paint up here, just in part of this mountain here. Um, going to take a little bit more of this uh, Southern Ocean blue and make that green, kind of this blue-green color on this hill here and just suggest that, that, there, that some of this color is right in there. Now, the contrast of this, okay, now this is the key thing here. The contrast for any of this greens is wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if I want a little bit of, if I'm going to say that's my lighter green and I've got some darker stuff in here, maybe come in this way, like that. Maybe there's a little bit of dark here. You can scrape it out if you need to. Uh, remember, this is not dried completely, so you've got a little leeway to scrape out. But, all right, we're going to just kind of leave that like this. Um, I can do the top of this, as long as I'm in these greens while it's still wet, right? I can do the top of this cliff, too, like this. I can come here like this and suggest that there's some green up here with this sort of olive greens. And look at how the brush strokes are... Um, you're blending it. You see how you're getting these streaks because you're not really drying anything. You see how we're doing that? And it's going right over the, um, right over that dark brown. And again, I'll come up here and do another little bit right here and suggest that there's uh, some greenery going here. And I haven't put any of the lighter colors in, but I certainly got, that's a good, it's just starting to get some real depth, isn't it? And then where did we say we needed some green here? We know we're going to have some light right there, but we know that we were going to have some green coming. I'm going to tip this because it's down this hill like this, almost like in um, vines coming down here like this. Well, they're growing down, and I know it gets lighter. Let's put a little bit of burnt sienna with that to yellow, and then just on the top of this, barely touching it now. I'm going to say that I've got some lighter vines. Same thing up here. So you have to see, if it gets too sticky, you may have to let it dry a little bit. Okay, but let's see, we're just barely touching it and saying that there's some of this lighter color right there. All right, and the same thing here too. I could probably do a little bit lighter right here in a couple places. Just not too many, but right there, maybe I'll just say it's a little bit lighter. All right, now that can be drying. All right, that absolutely can be drying while we're doing something else, okay? So I know I'm gonna have a beach coming out here and some sand coming this way. I know all that, right? That's gonna be, um, I'm gonna move all the modeling paste now and stick it over here because I don't really need it anymore and I think I'll get it confused with something else. So we're moving that over there. We're going to say we want some sand color. Here's some white and um, a little bit of yellow and burnt sienna. We've got a pretty nice sand color 
going here like that. And we know that we've got, it's coming down here on the, like this, it's coming this way. And as long as everything's pretty dry, I'm in good shape. But where do I know the sand color goes? I know the sand color is coming down the beach like this. You see the dark that's shining through this, that's peeking through? That's a hard effect to get otherwise. The same thing here. I've got some sand here. This is still wet. That green's still wet. Can't do much with this. But I can suggest here, on this one, this little runway of sand that's coming down this way. Coming all the way back up here like that. Start suggesting there's sand. And I want to say that there's sand in here too. This is our sandy beach. So I've got the palette knife going this way. Now this is where a little modeling paste is kind of helpful because we need to go a little, you know, have it go a little bit further than it is. So we're going to grab a little bit of that into our sand color. And I want to come out here, kind of come around. This is our farthest peninsula like this. And uh, all the all the little, everything's kind of going this way. And the sand's going up. It's going up here like this. Do you see that? It's uh, it, That's what a sand does on cliffs. I'm saying that there's some sand up here on this cliff. It's doing that, okay? Um, coming out this way like that. All right. Now, where else is there some sand color? Well, one of the things we didn't have out is some... Um, Cad red medium, which we definitely knew didn't need if we're doing sand. We need that color. We need to warm it up. And we need more yellow oxide because you notice that we ran totally out of that. Okay, this is why we're doing it small. And let's see what else have we got. Um, uh, oh, yeah, burnt sienna. Oh, we have that. Okay, so I'm going to clean my palette knife, which has gotten very sticky. And I'm cleaning that all up. Like that, start again. And I'll take some white, a little bit of yellow oxide, a little bit of this burnt sienna, a tiny bit of cad red medium, and I'll warm up a color right here, like that sand color. And I want to say that right in here, like this, there's this little pathway. Little pathway of sand, right? It's really a different effect you're getting than a brush gives you. Oh, you can't. It's almost impossible to get this with a brush. You get this darker gray color showing underneath, whatever the darker color was showing underneath. See that? And then if you need like a little bit, you know, so, something stronger, you can have it a little heavier. But it's, um, it automatically is going to do this for you. And here's a little bit of red and yellow, make a little bit of an orange color, okay? which is pretty, and I'll put a little bit of burnt sienna with that so it's not so bright. And you can say that there's, um, you can get a little bit of color in your picture, really, without too much. Look at that. I mean, it's, I think it's really kind of cool how this works. Don't you think so? I do. And then I'm going to take some of the mixing white into that sand color that we just made. Now you've only been with this, this same palette knife. You've been using this one palette knife, Yeah, right? just using this one little palette knife. And I'm going to take this little bit of this warm, redder color. Ooh, too much red. Okay, let's just Bring scrape that off, off right? And come along, ooh, too much. Come along here like this and say, here's my... I want well, a little bit warmer color coming down my cliffs here. Maybe just a, probably more yellow. Um, this, this, oh, there you go. There we go. It's just coming down here like that. I'm going to say that that's barely touching this. And then we're going to have some of this warmer. Nothing's ever just one color, okay? So that's, um, and it's going out into the water like this, okay? I know last time we had a question about the palette knives. Where did that palette knife come from and how, how were they identified? Well, they're all different, but, you know, you, you're really going for a small shape here, sort of this triangular small shape. That's the most I can do with that, right? It's just this, try to get this triangular small shape, right? And that's, that's what I'm going for here, and I'm going to just suggest that there's a beach along here. 
There's nothing here. There's no orange here. There's only beach where this is kind of level. In front of it. Yeah, because it goes in front. Yeah, it comes out here like that. This is sort of a little beach area. And this comes back here. And then when you go way back here, um, on this one, you're not going to see sand anymore. It's too far away to see sand. But you might see very thin thing of... Um, see how I'm flattening this out and barely taking it and then just touch it at an angle. Figure out where the angle is, right? Okay, that's not getting it for me. Um, you want, don't want to use a plastic one unless you're using one of the art sherpas because there are red ones because they're not sharp enough to do this. And even I'm not getting the... I am not getting the um, edge I want with that one. So that would require me trying a different one. So here, this is. let's try this one. Okay. There you go. So now I want just a little bit of edge right here. On this one, back there, like that. Yeah, yes and yes. And then I want a little bit of a light edge on this one. Let's see, that's not going to do it. So you go back over here. Let's flatten this out. Okay, so you have to flatten the paint out to use it. All right, so here's this on this edge here. I'm going to say that right along the edge of this water here, it's a little bit lighter, like that, just a little bit. You know, I'll do more, but um, I think that's a pretty good way. And if, even if I just use part part of this. See, this is a little bit lighter coming out, this little sandbar coming out here like that. Um, now, in the meantime, all oh, this is kind of drying, so we can still do stuff, but this is, I've got to dry it now. We're going to dry everything. Okay. Okay. So, somebody said, why don't you guys have t-shirts? And because you know, if you've been watching our videos, uh, most of the time that's what I wear. I mean, I only wear stuff like this if I'm not painting because I get paint over everything. So we actually came up with a really cute uh, t-shirt that's designed for you to be able to not only paint in it, get paint on, but um, what, what, are you, what are you thumbing for here? What is this? Let them know. Be up in the upper right hand corner. They can see a little sample. Oh, well, they're going to ask me why I'm not wearing a t-shirt because they haven't come yet. It takes two weeks to get them. This is like you're on the breaking news, the ground floor of this t-shirt stuff. But we, w we did a lot of research to make sure that the t-shirts that uh, we got affiliated with were the highest quality. And um, we know a lot of people that own that brand. And we would encourage you to check it out and, because not only do they have sizes. So of course I have sizes. What do you mean? Well, I, what I mean is that you can go from like extra small to like 5X. And we have, you can pick out the colors. We keep the design, but you can pick out the style, the colors, and customize that t-shirt that, you know, kind of fits you. And what I think is really cool is we're going to be having all kinds of new designs coming up. This is the very first one. And come join our Merry Band of Artists and let everybody know that you paint with us. Now this is still tacky, but it's skinned over. So we're going to play with the water a bit while that's drying. Okay, we're going to work on the water. So we want it. Generally speaking, we want it more of an ultramarine blue back here, and more of the blue greens as we come forward. So the first thing we would need would be more ultramarine blue. Okay, it's going to be paint. So we're just sort of out of paint. And this is, you know, people always say, how much paint do you go through a lot with the palette knife? It's all right. So we're going to. So here's my ultramarine blue and I'm just going to mix it into this color right here. Um, put a little of that thalo green with it, that uh, Southern Ocean blue. And I want this dark blue right here. I'm going to come back this way with this color using this longer palette knife. And um, let's see, let's take a little bit of mixing white with that. No, just maybe this white here. This is too long a palette knife for the size of this painting. Let's go back to our smaller one. It's just too big. So again, and that does make a difference. If you don't have the smallest palette knife, you're going to find it very awkward. So 
So we're going to say we're going to come back over this way because I want little tiny palette knife strokes. Okay, and then as I come more forward this way, and of course we need more white because we're just really out. We're going to start changing the colors of the water and giving it more of a teal color as we come forward. You see, this has got to get more into the teals like that as we come forward. So, water is never just one color. Um, I'm going to get out a little zinc white again because I'm kind of. Mine got a little bit uh, contaminated. Get out a little bit more of that. And uh, here, okay. Um, get a little of this going in here. When I get closer to up to the up to the shoreline, I want a little bit of white, the light coming in it. So just scrape it off, get a little bit of light right on the palette knife. Every time I go over it, it kind of mixes in with the uh, with that blue. See that? I'm going to come around the coast here with my lighter color, which I will then lighten up one more time. But now as we come this way, here's our southern ocean blue color. with white in it. Make some of these strokes a little bit lighter. Okay. And then we're going to start adding a touch of yellow to that. Tiny bit of yellow and then I want kind of greens as I get up to this area. I want it kind of more of a green water. So I come up this way and I want some white in it. And all the brush strokes are coming back this way. Or the palette knife strokes. Everything's kind of going this way. Okay, and as we get back more this way, talking about our stronger teal colors. They're really wave looking. Yeah, and they're sort of, yeah, they're coming up here like this. We're sort of suggesting waves coming into the shore by, like, doing this. Just with the, with the thickness of the paint, okay? So I don't want to overmix it, but here's our blues again back here. I think what I'm missing is thalo blue. I think that's the color I sort of am mi missing here. It's, I don't have a lot of that left. Here it is. Here we go. You can scrape off and start again if you don't like a color. Okay, so here's our... Beautiful colors. And don't over mix this because what's beautiful about this palette knife colors are the um, the fact that there are so many beautiful colors in the water. Okay. And I'm out of the Southern Ocean blue color. So I'm going to put that back with some titanium white. You notice I'm not mixing it that much. Please notice that. It's not getting mixed that much at all. And right from the edge of this cliff, maybe put some white on. That's a pretty area. So I've got the white on the left side of the palette knife here, and I'm barely touching this now. I'm suggesting there's some white zigzaggy waves coming in this way. Okay, now this is tricky because if you you don't want to, you know, if you want it wet on wet, but on the other hand, if you dig it in too deep, you'll you'll have um, it'll all just be one color again. You'll have to scrape off and try again. 
there we go, so that came that way, and then here's our white. We know we've got some light coming up. This is where we don't want any blue on this. Here's some mixing light. Let's just try that. I want to pull some white coming this way from the beach area. Like that. Okay, and then if the more you go over it, the white disappears. So this, I'm just trying to float this on top. Not pushing hard at all. Now, yeah, that's nice. I'm going to bring that in there a little bit, okay? So we've got these beautiful colors in the water, yeah? And, um, and we've got this nice texture. And we don't want it smooth. We want it kind of choppy. That's the whole idea behind it, is having it a bit choppier. And there was a bit of dark right here that I wanted to put with that dark green color. Right like that. And uh, see, you can you can move it a little bit. You can move your white just a little bit, not much. And um, that's that's the thing. People say, "Well, does it take a lot of paint?" Yeah, it does. Um, but on the other hand, um, it's a neat effect. You can see here's this little bit of white floating over the top of this. Zigzagging that around, and then I've got this right here. Now, if it's if it's this, if I'm not getting anywhere, like something like this, if I'm trying to do like a little bit of surf here, and I'm not, it's not doing it for me, then I will let it dry a little bit. I'll come back and let that dry a little bit. But um, you can see I've created a nice surf, and I want to have a little bit of more light back this way around it. And in this one I had some rocks out here in the um, right in here. And I can put those, but um, I don't yeah. want them as dark as I had before, right? So if I said that there were some rocks which are right off of this cliff, right here like this. And you're laying that right on top of the wet. Right on top of the wet. I'm saying that there's some rocks right here in this um, right there and here some rocks and just put those rocks right back now they're a little like I say they're a little bit darker than I want but I can lighten those up a bit when they dry I think I'm out of the um, there it is. rock color yeah oops there's some oh that's a happy accident look at that where the water's splashing up on my rocks Okay. All right, so we'll let that dry, and then we can come back. Again, we can come back with a brush and, and play a little bit. You know what I mean? We can, we've got a little bit of leeway here, like with this. I can We've got definitely have some leeway with the, with the colors. There's my green, which I wanted, which I had lost before. I wanted some of this green color back in here. All right, so I'm going to just leave the water alone now, except for maybe this. Just come over it like this. Well, this is still wet. All right, now. Um, what can we do with our hills now? They've, they've had a chance to to dry a little bit. Now the, the water's drying. Let's get some green going here. Uh, so remember I said we needed something lighter up here? Huh? Everybody remembers that, right? Brighter the colors, the more they come forward. And I'm just barely tapping that over here. And just, it's you're, gonna you're, catch you're some of those. riding the waves with the paint. Yeah. It's going to catch some of that. And here's some that thalo green color, a little bit of white. And I want I want a little bit of brown in it uh, to tone it down. Okay, so that's pretty. I want to just say here's a 
little bit of lighter green come in here and I like that color so I might come up here and say where else can I put it look here it's just going to drag down on this it's the next light color on top of the hills same thing up here like this it's going to come down Now that's a little bright than I want. See, I wouldn't want anything that bright. Uh, that that color needs to be more in front. That bright yellow color can, can be more this front. But this is too bright. So the trick is, if you do something like that, you can't do much with it. Once you've put it on there, you're sort of stuck with that. When you dry it, you can glaze it and push it back. But you really can't do much, too much with it yet. But you can, it can be pushed back, so I'm not going to worry about it. And I'll show you that trick. Here you go. I'm going to come down here with these curtains of tropical fauna. Okay, this is where I really want this color. Which is going to say this is up here like this. This cliff is here, and I want this is very dark here. This cliff here. I want to say this is a little bit darker. Okay. What did we do with our sand color? Do we have any sand color anywhere? Yeah, we have some sand color. Let's uh, let's bring some sand color up our cliff, like that. Okay. All right. So, when when do you start playing with the brush? Well, now, I mean, and you can see we got pretty far with this, didn't we? It now, looks like you're basically almost done. Yeah, we're we're far with this, but we're not completely far because this is still wet. I want to go ahead and go around these rocks, but I. I would dig into that, and I want to uh, define the difference between um, this this sand cliff and here. So I might take my brush and be a little bit more uh, selective about where the cliff goes down. See, I can come back with the brush and and work on a little bit. It doesn't have to be just because I did it with a palette knife doesn't mean I can't come back. With something even like a little brush here. Do your and, final touch ups. And yeah, and just sort of reshape something that you didn't think was shaped as perfectly as it could have been, okay? And uh, like back up in here where this one is, um, maybe I want a little bit lighter here on this right here. And then between here and here, I'd like some mixing white, like a, like a mist. I have it in the other painting, and so that's what I want to convey here. So I want to convey a mist between um, the, um, the mountains. So I'm going to thin it out, and I'm going to say right here, like this, and that, that, that got some red on it, so let's just fix that right now. Okay, I'm over here thinning this out, right? Wipe it off, and I'm going to say here, Okay, now let's see, I need a rag. Um, okay, so I'm going to say, here's my mist coming up here. Now this is dried enough where I can do this. And then this is going to be, this is the mist that's coming up, this mountain sort of fog that's coming up between the two valleys and separates them. And there's another one that's um, here that's doing that too. That's and that's, that, which is, gives it some real depth to the painting. Okay, when you're saying that this, some of this happened over the down here like that. So you see how we push that we push that cliff back. And I'd like some I had some blue green color here which was really pretty. And I want some of that on this cliff but darker. So I'm gonna just you can dry in other words, you think it's just palette knife, but you can come back and touch a color up if you need to. If you need to suggest there's another color in the sand. You don't have to use a palette knife to do it. 
There's a little bit of blue coming down here. Okay, they're coming down into my rocks. Okay, so now, and how about the sand as far as lightening it up even more? It's pretty green. Let's get some, let's get some light yellow here. Let's get a sand color going here. All right. Now, maybe some titanium. It's kind of out of that. And what's this? If I wanted to say that, that some of this was was lighter here, my sand color. Again, you can take your brush very gently. Um, add add some definition to your uh, painting. It doesn't have to just be. Um, a palette knife. You can say I want more of a sand bank coming down here like that, and you've got it. It, it, it. Once you get this texture on here, that's pretty. It's very effective. Okay. Once you get that happening, it's it's, it's very effective. And I know that. For instance, I want something much lighter up here. So I just might just drag my brush over it because the palette knife has already given me. Let's see, I don't want that color. Palette knife has already given me the col you know, the lighter color. So if I said I need this a little lighter, I just barely have to touch it and drag it, and it'll catch some light spots on here and bring this forward. Okay. Now I've got to dry this water again so I can go ahead and finish it off. Okay. That's my next thing is to is to dry that, and I want to make sure that I've got the Kind of the swirlies the way I want them. Just kind of take my brush and make sure it's doing what I want it to do. All right, let's dry the water and then let's see about finishing this up. I'll show you how to tone this back. Okay. So in order for you to see this video, you had to get up on YouTube. And if you didn't have internet, like you can't watch it, right? But sometimes we don't have internet. Maybe you're traveling and you want to be able to paint and sit there with your laptop or your iPad or your, your phone and you want to sit out on a campground somewhere or uh, maybe go visit relatives and they live out in the boondocks and don't have good internet and you want to still paint. Well, that's a one reason and just one of many, but certainly one great reason why you want to check out our downloadable videos that you can buy and own forever and uh, keep playing back and no uh, monthly or weekly subscription necessary. You own it forever and we have some fabulous titles that uh, I know you're going to love and some aren't even in our academy. They're exclusively for our downloadable website. So check out, what's the website? Ginger Cook On Demand. Ginger Cook On Demand. I knew it. I just had a senior moment there. See you then. Now, I just hope this is dry enough. If it's not, I'll have to just, oh, you know what? We're just going to talk about something for a minute while we're waiting out to dry. If you're wondering how to use a palette knife, one of our best videos on YouTube is this one. And um, it's the basics of how to make a palette knife work. And I strongly suggest, got over 100,000 views on this video. It's a really great video on how to, you know, get your palette knife to do things. And because we're doing so much palette knife in, um, uh, in May. in May for our YouTube and we've already done so we started in April with this one where we did the boat and did the texture with palette knife if you haven't done this this one this is a cool painting I think really neat um, and I've got uh, um, this one is one that's uh, it either you uh, not this one that, that that actually is an academy lesson <laughs> what happened to the other one that was the palette knife I'm not sure which one you're looking for, boss. You know, the one that was the, the we just showed, the, um, Harriet. All right, so this is a, this, this particular, vi this is a video we've got in our academy for May, which I think is absolutely awesome. And again, all the different ways to mix greens. 
You'll notice we mixed a lot of those greens tonight, but that's all the different ways. This one? Yeah, this one and, and this that one, one. yeah. So go. again, uh, here's the something similar, isn't it? Uh, when you look at both of these, couldn't they be the same? Couldn't uh, Look, if I put them together, couldn't they be the same place? Well, and wait, I've got to back out when you do back out, there Back out, back out. Can you see this? Yeah. Can you see? Don't they look like the same place? Yeah, they really do look like you're in the same area. Yeah, they look like the same area. This is both areas of France. Um, uh, but this one probably was Holland, and, and this was France, and they're both at the same time period. And I want you to see, one's lady, one is an academy lesson, this lady reading a book, and this is going to be a YouTube lesson. It's either, if it, we've either done it or it's coming up. I don't know the order we're releasing these. But again, uh, this is a kind of thing that we do with palette knives. And when we're talking about, someone says, well, what's the academy? The Academy is, um, sounds like it's a course, and it's really a collection of self-guided -gu tutorials, a step-by-step. -step. It's just me and you talking, no jo John's voice. and We just uh, take an hour, two, six, whatever, and we go through <laughs> tutorials step-by-step, step, and, and like we show you, you how, to, how to paint it. And, and the neat thing is, is that uh, you, know, you go at your own pace. So you, can, you know, one lady said, I only paint on weekends. Well, that's fine. Most people just paint on weekends. And for less than the price of a, you know, for eating dinner out a month, you can jo join the academy. And if you're a senior, you get a better deal than that. Um, if you join for a year, you save, t you get two months free. If you join for a year, did you guys know that? And I didn't people, know that. yeah, you get two months free. So, and what does that entail? That entails new videos every week, and we don't expect you to do them all. There's just some that are going to be more interesting to you. Other maybe more tailored to your skill level. So basically what we have is a, a global acrylic tutorials and personal art coaching. And personal art coaching. Well, you can send me your, if you're a monthly or um, uh, annual member, you can send me your artwork in for some suggestions and help on how you can improve it. And even when we're traveling like this, like today I probably did about uh, 15 uh, personal art coaching videos for somebody and, um, you know, for different members of our academy. And every day I'm, I do them. So seven days a week I'm pretty much doing them unless we're you know, in an airplane or traveling by car somewhere, or I'm just deathly sick, you get your video done. I tell well, people... Well, even deathly sick this last... Yes, of COVID last time <laughs> I, I, I did them anyway. So that's the advantage of having a professional... We were looking online, someone else was offering the same service for about... Um, if you did it, we, we priced it out for a year membership. No, even if you paid monthly at the highest rate, you would be spending like $480. And that is that gives you five personal art coachings a month, so that's sixty for the year. This guy was four hundred and eighty dollars for ten. Yeah. Do the math. Yeah, I'm telling you what. I mean, nobody's offering it at, at the price we're offering it. Who knows how much longer we can offer it at this price? But one thing we know that if you're an academy member, you're grandfathered in to whatever price it is you signed up on. You keep being a membership member with us, and that's what you pay regardless, because that's your loyalty. Uh, guarantee it. If you, if you stay with us and don't drop out for whatever reason, because you feel oh, I'm busy for a month, I'll come back in. Um, you know, you you don't always. Get, we're not out. You know, you kind of get in the back of the queue again. You know, so um, th think about that. It's a good thing to you know come with us. So what I think this is maybe skinned over a little bit, but I wanted to show you those things because we're, there's so much that we're doing, and there's so many different ways to paint palette knives, and also coming up in. In uh, June for the Academy, we've got another horse oh, that we're going to so be doing sad. in the palette, palette knife uh, horse. Uh, yeah, I love it. So, yeah, <laughs> got to be in the mood him. for the sad horse, right? <laughs> so, um, all right. Maybe we can so talk now, when we film it to make it a happy horse. <laughs> probably when I do it again, I'll make him happy. All right. So I've got some titanium white, and I'm going to come. At the, and my, no water on the brush, man. It can be damp, but don't make sure you don't have any water. You don't want to wake this paint up, right? And I want to suggest that there's some surf coming this way. <coughs> in the lightest part of my cliff right here like this, see? I'm zigzagging this in, right? Like that. And then up in here, I'm going to take some zinc white, which is not quite as bright a white, and I want to come this way and zigzag in this other layer of water that's kind of coming in this way along our coast um, and kind of just sort of zigzag that in there 
And then let's come up right along the, the beach here and just uh, play with a little bit of white right on the beach and, and, and next to our... Uh, to our rocks. To our rocks. So right now you're basically doing your final t final touchings, finishing it off, right? Yeah, pretty much. I'm finishing it off, and I'm gonna gonna have to tone that down, right? But if I got a little bit too much of that blue here, I can come back with some. In other words, I can come back. I've got enough texture in here where I can play with this water. Just because it, you've done it, it's not written in stone. Does that make sense? You can smooth it out, or you know, change it out a little bit if you got it too rough, or. If you want it lighter somewhere, if you feel like this area here is a little bit dark, and ooh, see, look at all that dark. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> but if I said this is, I wanted this a little bit lighter, I can go back and and add a little bit of light to it. That's okay. You can do that. And the same thing with this right here. I want it lighter right next to my cliff right here. See, right like this. Bring that out like this. See, so it feels like it's um, coming into the green a little bit here. There we go. I'm on a little tiny bit of green water back in this area. So again, you can cut, you know, once you've, uh, this is still a little wet, but look at that. You can just, you know, really get some wonderful, wonderful effects um, with this. And here's a little bit of this mixing white, and I want to come around back out here very quietly and suggest that uh, that the coastline's doing this, see, way back there. And uh, let's give this a little break between here and here, between our rocks, okay, like that. So that's that's the advantage of a palette knife. It looks like a very, very uh, finished uh, painting. We've got a few little flowers to put here. Now we need to tone back that. And one of the ways you can tone back something is raw umber. Raw umber will glaze something without, um, aqua gold will do it too, but uh, raw umber, let's see what aqua gold will do. I think aqua gold might be a one one. That's aqua nickel gold from Golden. Let's see, let's see what that'll do. Um, that would do it if I had glazing medium, which I happen to have. <laughs> so, I'm going to get some satin glazing medium out and uh, use this color here and very thin, like a tea stain. All right, that's pretty strong still. And uh, I'm going to just tone this down a little bit here. I'm going to push it right back. See? Off this cliff here. It just uh, was a little too bright. Um, I want it a little bit brighter than that, but not as dark as, I want it slightly brighter than that, right? So let's get some more glazing medium and maybe erase some of it. Maybe I can lift some up. I can lift a little of this up. Because I want it, I just, it was just too bright. You guys could see that, right? It's just, it's a little bit too bright. We still want something bright there, but nothing Nothing that bright, so I can come down here with a little yellow oxide now. So that's these. Um, uh, let's make this a little darker. So a little bit of this green here, suggesting it. Remember, this is Hawaii, okay? And then, uh, yeah, that, that pushed that back very nicely. Um, one of the things that happens when you're doing palette knife is you find yourself running out of colors. You go to touch something up and you don't have the color anymore. So, um, like for something like this, I might want to come closer. Uh, let's see, let's change brushes. Need a small brush. I want to say that the I wanted to kind of get that mist going here from the, there you go, that's it, okay. And then right here, 
I want this a little darker. So I, again, I can I can define stuff. If I need to, and if that's too dark, so like a little bit of Goldilocks here. Just put something over it. There we go. Didn't want it quite that dark. All right, so there's my, I think I've got done pretty well with the cliffs. Let's see about lightening up just something on the rocks out here. A little bit of green here on these rocks. You're getting that from the sea. Okay, some green this way, uh, maybe some green down here. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, so I wanted some definition between this rock, this rock, and those others, yeah. And uh, again, this is where you do your Mixing white. Let's push smudge that back out. Now I want to I want to bring the eye forward a little bit in the front of the painting, and um, so I'm going to add some light here. So maybe some just um, sort of a light gold color here. Let's bring our eye up. Let's just touch this up here like this. You bring your eye forward a little bit this way, okay? So we're going to bring your eye back into this area, okay? And um, uh, I, I think I'd like some flowers in here. So I, I had them before, and I thought they were nice. And you can kind of see them. Let me just show you. Let me just show you what we've got so far, right? Can we back out? You back out and see the difference? Yep. Now, I don't know even if I can see it in the mirror, but I can kind of see it like this. You can back out and see the, well, you can kind of see it like that. Now, I feel like my water got a little dark back here because we dried it and it's a little dark. So I might just take some mixing white and just a um, clean brush and uh, just tone that back because I don't want the water this dark back here at all. So here's a clean brush and I might just take some mixing white like this and just um, lighten that up. Um, now, because it, it looks a little lighter than I want, so if I put some water on it, let's see, a little bit of blue. I just don't want it that dark. So I don't want you to think, just because you did it with a palette knife, that you're stuck with any color that you've put on here. You can certainly adjust colors regardless of whether you have a palette knife on here or not. Um, Um, absolutely can just you can use a big brush and it because your brush will sort of skip over this stuff and um, you don't want the water too busy the rocks are very busy so this water can't be you don't want this water too busy so that's one of the things I'm doing now is sort of lightening this up and uh, just taking a big brush like this and uh, There we go. Just toning this down a bit, right? I guess that's what I would tell you what I'm doing, is just toning it down so that it has the most impact where we want it. Okay. Wow, that's great. I'm loving that. That's just, I'm just... The cat's with this. And then this here's a little bit of the white here coming along and I'm just skimming it on here using an angle brush. Just skimming it on like that all the way off of here. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty happy with that. Let's see, where did we put that thalo blue? I know that there was just the tiniest bit of that left. And that's the color. I think probably more than ultramarine blue, we needed thalo blue back here. 
in the back, and that's where I kind of, we needed some phthalo blue back here rather than ultramarine blue. Yeah, it's closer to the original color. Yeah, I think that was the color we needed back here uh, in the back. It can be a little darker coming off like this. It's really a combination of the two. It's phthalo blue and a little bit of ultramarine blue. That's what it is. Just bring that out there like that. All right, because I, I like the gradations of the of the color. That's what makes the water so pretty is all these gradations of of blues and greens in your water. Did you know? When you think about that, that's what um, is really really pretty. It's this sort of blue green water that they've got. In fact, where is we were just going to be crazy. Where's, I knew it. Where's my phthalo green? I think that's the color I'm missing here. I want that for my water. And, you know, it's all right. We own all the toys. Why aren't we using them? Right? You own them, right? Here's that phthalo green. Oh, here's the color I want now. And I can just put a little of that color in. There we go. That's it. Oh, that's what I love about this painting is all this tropical water. Yep. Yes and yes. Oh, let's see, why aren't you in the way of my picture? Okay. So you're going, all right, so what's next? Well, we ran out of white. Anybody else notice that? I but noticed me? that immediately. We ran out of white, but that's all right. We know where it is, right? So then here we go. There, all right. So I'm very happy with the water now. And um, it doesn't need to be much, but I just it has to be that. So now, and there's so much beautiful texture in it. When you, when you look at this and you compare the two paintings with the texture, it's just night and day difference. Now, I think we did a little bit of magenta. Uh, oh, for the flowers. Now, this is where I would come back with the palette knife and just suggest a few flowers. Do a tiny palette knife again. Now, when you take it out of the water, you dry it off, right? Oh, yeah. It's in the water, and I'm drying it and cleaning it. So I'm going to say, here's some white. Here's a little magenta color. Here's a little cad red medium. Don't want to, I don't want to mix it all the same. Does that make sense? And did I put any purple out? I thought I put purple out the last time I was looking at something. But I didn't. That's that's dark gray. Where'd the purple go? I, had, I own purple. Just didn't put any out. So yeah, okay. I don't know that I want purple, but I might. So I'm taking it out, right? So now we're going to come up here with a little purple and magenta and white. And we don't want to mix this very much. There. All right, good. And white. All right, so then what I want to do here is just barely rub this on this area, and I'm going to catch it in a few places, and it's going to suggest just in this little area here, and I'm barely putting any on, that there's some flowers here. Some of these need to be a little darker. coming down my bank here, and maybe I want something a little bit lighter up here. Where's the white here? So let's barely touch it. Lose the tip. And I don't have them everywhere. I just got them in a few places. Just suggesting that there might be something growing here with the flowers and maybe a couple of cad red medium dots to, for color surprise, but not much. Okay, so that feels pretty good there. And then where'd the yellow go? Here's yellow. And um, there's phthalo green and yellow and white. Okay. Now we're going to gray that color with a little um, Magenta. This went to this magenta. We're going to gray that with a little magenta, that green. I want a blue green color up here on my grass.
it's interesting, the white is all gone. Again. Yeah, I can use some of this. Is any of this left? Okay, so I want this blue-green color up here on the top of this. There, just on the top of that bank, a little bit lighter than I have it. What are you? All right, I'm going to have to suck it up and get that white out. So that's not light enough. Now, okay. So that should be okay, that's too dark. I'm gonna see where's some white with that. All right, there's some there we go. All right. So okay. So if I look at a, um, I look at, I compare these now, and see where I'm in with the, with the, um, with our uh, lights and darks. Because remember, acrylics are very misleading in <coughs> that they dry <coughs> darker. So you're happily painting along, and then you go look, and everything's a little bit lighter than you thought. Yeah. And I'll maybe lighten this up a bit. Here. We need to lighten something up. It's got a little bit of purple tone to this color. It's kind of pretty. And uh, I think I want it a little bit darker here. Okay, so I'm going to go back with a little purple in here. Start. Um, uh, Okay, that's good. And then let's see, this is a very straight line here. Everybody's with me on that, a little straight. So let's take this and just change this shape a little bit right there. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but you, we just need to Just need to change that up just a little bit so they just all weren't the same. I think that's the thing that happens. You start, it's what we call cloning, where you start making everything the same. And we don't want to do that. So now what I'm doing, John, do you have anything that you, we want to add here to this? You want to talk about anything? Why I want to add a few more final touches to this? Uh, not right off hand. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting in some orange here, it's a little color surprise. Orange and um, thalo blue are complements. So by adding a little bit of that color, um, even back up here on our beach in a couple places, it goes very. It's very pretty. Your eye. It's like um, it's tr it, you trick the eye into loving the colors, and you're not even sure why you like them, but you want to see more of that. And we're going to do a little bit more of this orange cliff right here because that's the right next to that thalo. That's pretty. And let's see, anything else I want to do? Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. Cliff. You know, all this paint looks wet, but it isn't. You know, most of that's dried on me, you know? So I'm going to come up here like this and say, here's the beach. Make sure we have a good beach line. I like that word beach line and tide line. This is coming out a little further than we had it right here like this. Okay. Wow. This is fun. And you guys, that's why I say when you do a palette knife, you can go back and um, Touch it up, even re-sculpt it a little bit sometimes. Absolutely have the leeway to do that. So 
a few little bits of light green up here barely touching it but just up here bring your eye forward a little bit okay maybe here too huh maybe we want dark green there maybe we want a darker green here right here on the edge of this cliff here so you know it's above that I want you to look down on these rocks, right? I want you to know that you're, um, um, ab ab you know, above this, that there's no question about it, that this is higher than that water down there. It's not, you know, the, this is in forward and much higher than that water. Okay. So I think I'm done. I think there you go. I think that's what we've got. I hope this was fun. Um, if you um, want to see more uh, palette knife paintings and you like this, let us know in the comments if you want to see more how to take some of these paintings and turn them into palette knife pictures. Okay. Uh, let us know because we, if you, we, we need, your feedback is, is very valuable to us, isn't it, John? Absolutely. Let us uh, know what you're interested in. And, and what you want. And... Um, and you help us by sharing the channel and letting other people know that you're finding this fun to watch, too. So, all right. And I think that's pretty good. I'm just, I could, you know, you can sit there and say, well, where's a little bit of white back here on this, this one? A white beach back there, but it gets skinnier. It can't, has to get thinner as it goes back. You guys, it absolutely has to get thinner, or it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not yes. believable. It's not. Yeah, it's not believable if you don't have it getting thinner as it goes back. And the farther things are in the distance, the grayer they get. You just don't see them anymore. So make sure that's lighter than some of this other. And I can't think of anything else I want to do except um, just enjoy the painting, you know? I would say just enjoy it. There we go. Nothing like a palette knife painting. Because you've got such beautiful texture. All right, let's do a side-by-side -side now so you can see the finished product. You can see the difference. Maybe you want to go back and look at that other lesson and do it like this. Or if you want to do a palette knife with this, let me, can I put them side-by-side -side here? Why don't you room? put them top to top? To top. Top to top, top to top. All right, we can do that. Here. So here's our uh, Kanapali Coast. Um, and you can see one's done with the palette knife and uh, one is not. And I where's like the that? palette knife one. It's got so much more life to it. Doesn't it? I mean, it really makes a difference. And this is a beautiful painting, and I was very happy with that. But look at the difference in the texture. Uh, the only thing I'm still not happy with is this right here. I'm looking at this, and boy, that's really too bright right here. Um, but again, that's that's such a fixable thing. Because all I have to do is just to tone that down, and I want it more of the olive green color, right? So, and, and you make an olive green. It's ultramarine blue and yellow, okay? That's how you do an olive green. So that's, and, and you can add a little magenta if you want it more olive. But to get a nice olive green that's pretty much um, how to do it and this is just too yellow here and I'm not sure that I liked all that so I just toned it down just a bit more there you go better you can have some of that light peeking through but it was just a little bit too much of it because um, the, the lighter colors you want forward so if you're going to have a light color um, you know your lighter colors would be on this one um, because it's in front of that. So this would be the one I would want lighter. If you wanted to say this is, you know, here was our, um, you know, vines hanging down. There you go. And then this one, you know, being the one that has the most contrast with the lights and the darks um, here. You know, purple, see. Bring this one down. And then... It's amazing when I'm looking at this. It's fun to compare them both. 
see what I like, right? All right, so I'm going to say that this is my path coming this way down the hill. All right, that makes me very much happier. And again, I love, let's put the palette knife on here. Oh, that, um, uh, the little frame, where'd that cute little frame go? Where'd they put that little wooden frame? Did you take it? Well, I thought I brought it back to you. Well, I thought it was here. Yeah. I want you to see what this looks like framed in that frame now. Um, the frame's going to match that painting better than the other one now. Look at this. <clears throat> How neat is that, huh? Look at you painted a frame painting. I mean, I mean, look at that, and look at the wonderful texture that goes with that. Isn't that just neat? So, if you like the, you like the look of palette knife, you like the, um, the suggestions of palette knife, and uh, you know, the, how that looks on a painting, and you like the texture, you know, using a little bit of modeling paste will stretch it out. I feel like I could almost take these. There's, you know, these flowers and touch them up. <laughs> you just can't leave it alone, can you? Well, I just, they disappeared on me, you know what I mean? You put a frame around them. Yeah, there you go, just touched them up just a bit right there. But uh, there we go, kind of poly coast. I feel like we've got um, a marvelous uh, painting here, and I hope you guys really enjoyed it as much as I did showing it to you. Don't forget that... Um, We've got other uh, palette knife paintings coming up, or they, we've either done them or they're coming up on YouTube. But this is palette knife um, uh, 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 May, and so uh, this was an old dead artist that also um, is you know, 1900s, and he was the first one of two guys. They were called um, expressionists, and this is a, a you know his yellow flower. So again. We're going to do that. That was one where he was studying colors. He studied, yeah, this was, he was a big fan of Van Gogh, and he was studying, he did this in 19, I think, 04 or something. Yeah. It was, um, he was studying uh, impressionistic paintings and colors, and uh, interesting character, and you'll hear more about him. So, anyway, that was fun, John. Anything else we can say? I, I think we're good. I think it was a great lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it, palette and I. It's going to be Palette Knife May. Let us know if you want uh, us to continue with Palette Knife or if you have, and what kind of subject matters you're looking for. Put them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And stay tuned for this fabulous message. Fabulous message coming up just for you guys. Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or um, maybe you two can learn to draw that you know we we have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs but I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves so here's the here's the commercial from me to you I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial in wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.